Okay, as promised, we're on the reflection, part five, the reflection and the prayer for all four parts, and that's only two commandments, blog topic six. The two commandments, faith and love, are integrally connected. They cannot be separated. Faith depends, love depends on faith. Faith depends on love. It's, it's our relationship with God and it's our relationship with others. Vertical relationship with God really affects. It's what it's the power by the Holy Spirit for the um, our horizontal love with others. As Christian musicians, just as with so many special terms, the New Testament writers redefine. They do so all the time. Logos word or message of God, and so you can go look at these links, which we've done many times. So Bible Hub will show you how they do this redefinition a lot because they're talking to their Jewish crowd, right? Jewish Christians, early church, all Jewish. And so they need to use their language, but then they need to update it because the new new covenant's completely different in kind. And so it's law of commandments. Now there's not a law of 613 commandments, but it there is a law of two trusting, relying faith in Christ and unconditionally loving one another as, just as he did, just as Christ did. Us. He did us, did this to us. And it's completely different from anything in the Old Testament. All right, superior, completely, hands down superior. So these two commandments are the new covenant. It's the law of the new covenant. There is a law. And Paul talks about this law of faith and the law of love. Right? This is what was preached and taught in the gospel or sound sayings or doctrine of Jesus and his apostles. That's what was taught, right? So Paul always is using these terms. Anything else, especially, I say Paul a lot because he wrote 51% of the New Testament. I mean, but like I said, there's so many writings we we don't we know are written uh, and we don't have anything else, especially any part of the Old Testament law, was considered false teaching and false prophecy. Okay, that's right. You, you, you know, when teachers of the law came in, they considered that false teaching, and when, and they also considered it false prophecy. Uh, so we got to understand. Uh, there was a real backlash against the Old Testament. Always to drag withered, dried up, disconnected Christians into the slavery. So when you when you disconnect from Christ, you're a vulnerable prey. And they just looked for you. And they would just drag you back to Moses. Back into the slavery, Paul talks about, of commandments. Often for their own ambitions and financial gain. You bet. These people always cause problems and will, right, divisions, they cause divisions, they cause problems, quarrels, all kinds of things, and will involve weak Christians in fiery trials of this world. But God is faithful. He will lift them up higher to receive more of his sunlight. So, these Christians, true Christians... This is the key. They never were of us. They were never true Christians because they left us and they never came back. So this is really key. You can't judge until the final day. Very, very easily. But uh, he's saying, you know, you know, you, you got to be. You're in danger of hellfire. If you leave Christ, you're in danger of hellfire. You you have to, salvation is faith that endures to the end. He said really clearly, he will lift the true Christians up higher to receive more of his sunlight. Sun, he says, I am the light of the world. And he will, and he will produce the wasteful uh, growth away. Oh, what am I trying to say there? He will prune. That's what he does. He prunes the wasteful growth away. Now, 
I know on vines there's a lot of wasteful growth. You know, I want it to go in a certain direction. I've got to cut off stuff that's going in the wrong direction, or I got to move that vine. You know, there's a lot of wasteful growth, and you know, you really have to know how to prune when it comes to to roses. You don't want crossing because that where they cross it rubs, and wherever it rubs, that's where you're going to get a disease, and it's going to kill the plant. The only way to prevent this and produce much fruit to the glory of the Father is to stay connected to the vine of Christ. This is now how we have koinonia fellowship or partnership with God, a relationship. All koinonia sharing of divine nature and divine miraculous powers comes, right, it talks about this, sharing the powers, come from this is the key. Do you want? Yes, we want miraculous powers. We want divine nature. But the key is it all comes from meno abiding or cohabitating or remaining connected to the vine of Christ. And a lot of this has to do with our faith. Our faith closes doors. If we don't have faith, but we doubt, we don't receive. We, we, we are so doctrinally stuck in these boxes that aren't even biblical. They're not even biblical, but we believe them because our church tells us. The, or we read it in some bogus of 900 versions of the Bible in English. And we just take it hook, line, and sinker like we're a, boo, a little bluegill, you know, just biting on corn. These are the only two uh, Jesus told the 11 apostles to teach disciples as part of the Great Commission. There's only th two. Only two, which was what? There are only two commandments. We know that. There's only two commandments. Entele, of faith in Christ and loving others that Jesus told the 11 apostles to teach the disciples as part of the Great Commission. Evidence shows these two simple commandments were likely confessed, we, we know this from church history, at one's water baptism. Both are so intertwined, they cannot be separated. Being, we, I think they're coupled like 19, 19 times in the New Testament, coupled together. Being the very nature of God and the Spirit. So they should ultimately come out as the good works. Now, how are they coupled? Yeah, they are coupled together, you know. Jesus trusts the Father. He has faith, right, in the Father. He has trusting, relying faith in the Father. He, he doesn't doubt the Father. It's, and he loves, it's because he's in love with the Father. So, same thing. If we are connected to them, right, the Godhead, then we're going to have these good works or obedience to the truth or obedience to Christ, obedience to the Son, obedience to Jesus Christ, to obedience to God, obedience to the Word, or message, right, which is, is that is the Gospel, right, all the same, foreordained for us because of the indwelling Spirit of Christ. That That's their nature, right? Faith and love. Becoming, thus becoming, the workmanship of God. The righteousness of God now being Jesus living in us. He is the righteous and holy one. He is the righteous and holy one. All through the scripture of God now being Jesus living in us. Just as Zechariah 4, 6 foresaw for the new covenant, absolutely in fact no longer by might nor power. And that's all about man's internal and external, or I should say external and internal external resources and internal abilities. It's different Greek and Hebrew words for that. But by my spirit. So it has nothing to do with man, but now about the spirit of God. The promise, there's always this word, the promise, being spoken of, was for the coming of the Holy Spirit, to be caused to do his statutes. Right? That's what it says. Cause you. That he has written our uh, written our on our hearts, right? He's written on our hearts, not on paper or on 
commandments uh, on stone. No, he's written, this is the new covenant promise, right? So the new covenant has nothing to do with the old covenant, which was on stone tablets and paper. Paul says this over and over. The promise is to routinely ask for, to prophetically learn and teach from the routine baptism or filling, or I should say, and be taught. We want to be learn and be taught we're, to, we're going to be taught by God. That's the promise. Taught by God. We're going to learn from Jesus. Being taught by God. Jesus says, you need to take my yoke upon you and learn from me. <laughs> That's what he says. Learn from me and be taught by God from the routine baptism or feel it filling of the Spirit. And I say routine because that participle is always talking about the habitual or routine. This is not a one-time event that happened at your water baptism, but happens. You should, you should just always get into the Spirit. It's vital to the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, even being possible, just... Uh, and, and this asking for the Holy Spirit routinely being baptized uh, is in uh, in Luke eleven thirteen. Just uh, to eleven verses, right? Eleven verses from the request. For the kingdom. So, you know, you're requesting for the kingdom. You're, you're saying, I want this. I want the kingdom in my life. I want the kingdom in my life. I want your will to be done in my life. Well, how does that happen? Jesus gives you the marching orders at the end, right? He says, by asking and asking and asking and asking and asking for the good gift of the Holy Spirit, which is a baptism filling the Holy Spirit. The promise wasn't for a continuation of or addition of grammar writings in Grafe scripture. Not even hint, not even one hint. I've looked everywhere. I've read this thing a thousand times. Jesus never asked for anything of his to be written down, unlike every rabbi in history. They have volumes of these. It's the Mishnah. The promise was that God would teach us personally and directly by his voice. That was the original promise on Exodus 20. He restores it. Salvation means restore, restoration. He goes back to the original plan, gets rid of all the middlemen, all the teachers. The anointing is such the holy. The anointing of the Holy One is Christ. Uh, is provides the one teacher. He's our daily bread. His original perfect will plan in Exodus twenty, ten through eleven. He is back. He is back to being the one teacher. By his Holy Spirit. I love it. I am back. <laughs> the real promises in the New Testament, right? The real promises in the New Testament, the real promise, I should say, in the New Testament is by the prophetic rhema word. Uh, no, it's promises. You can you can see all these promises. You can go see all these other promises, you know, plural promises in the New Testament. It's like uh, the, the prophetic rhema word that comes out of the mouth of God is, what you can live on. Uh, that it never the, Every word that comes from the mouth of God is accomplished. Always comes out of the mouth of God and accomplishes what it's set out to do. You know, all these verses have to do with the spoken word of God. It has nothing to do with anything writing, <laughs> anything written. It has the power for faith and the power of the gospels preached, right? It's the preached. You never see this written Oh, I'm going to write the gospel down. No, it's the preached gospel logos word or message of God. That's the promise. It says signs and wonders will follow the preached word of God. It's not talking about, and preached means out of your mouth. These two commandments are completely different in kind and superior to any Old Testament commandment. The little children and other least among you will receive from God the secrets of the kingdom before the proud, wise, and understanding ones. Jesus is saying this. The patient endurance of faith and serving unconditional love of others. 
like Christ did, cannot be separated. These things, like Christ did, they cannot be separated. You know, people want to separate these into separate little boxes, as so many religious people try to do. But Paul and James are correct. They say they cannot be separated. You can't quote Bible verses or believe theological dogma or doctrines. This is what scribes and Pharisees do. That don't know God, doesn't love God. You can't do this or say you know or love God. We see them always saying, oh, we, I say Christians say this, Jewish Christians, I love, I know and love God. Je the Jews did this, Jesus says, no, you don't. And have either of these mythic, missing. Have either of these missing without being deceived or a liar. What is these two commandments? It's the, the two commandments. So they keep saying they belong together, they're integrated, and you can't separate. So you can't have one without the other. And so my prayers, thank you, Lord, for helping me pull so much material together from really an exhaustive 31-page study that I only put some of it here on the Internet and boil it down for others to proceed, you know, to understand. He did that. He helped me go through this. It was, it was torturous. Lord, set them free. Set people free by the truth. Which is not so much this information. Though it can keep you from so many damaging errors. So much damaging error. And that's why a lot of what was written was written. They were saying, hey, we got to warn you, man. You, got, you guys are going down the wrong path. You know, go back to the Holy Spirit. Stay connected to Jesus. I don't need to write you about brotherly love. You know, you need to be taught by God. Keep going back to that. You know, and so it's very dangerous. But I see the New Testament writers always pointing back to what they had, which was a personal relationship that was doing all the teaching. Okay, but Jesus Christ, by your spirit living in them, teaching them every day, so with the anointing, they have absolutely, in fact, no need that any man teach them. Praise your name that your new covenant way is so simple that little children and the other least among you, you know, super uneducated, autism spectrum, all kinds of people, they can get it before the so-called greater wise and understanding ones, all these scholars, right, who study Bible all the time. And there was a time when that's all I did, five Bible calls. Study, 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 study. Write papers, write papers. And I'm trying to save you a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> they had me going in circles in five Bible colleges. A's, straight A's, valedictorian one school. And I was going to get a master's in divinity. I just pooped out. I realized there's no point. It's, 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 it's no point. There was no point. I saw the error in my ways. The Lord opened my eyes. Because I really knew what it was saying. And what it was saying is don't go the way of the scribe and the Pharisee. That is the error. It's a trap, they said. It's a, it's a trap that keeps your bent backs forever. It's just a curse. My back was always hurting. My body was hurting. Repetitive motion from all the thousands of hours of studying for all these Bible colleges. It's a trap. It's a trap. It does not lead you to the knowledge of God. I mean, I saw, I had my eyes open, the Holy Spirit woke me up. This is not the way. The way of the scholar is not the way. Go look at Logos, Word of God. Look, go look at the least among us. You'll see plenty written about this. So save yourself a lot of trouble. Look at the Bible info page. So I'm just stirring up the conversation so you guys can go from there. So that's what you do on the Bible. It says each of us bring a teaching. The Holy Spirit has shown me all these things. The Holy Spirit has shown you many things. So we need to share that down below in the comment section. All right? God bless you. Look forward to it. Everybody's looking forward to it. So we can all learn, Paul says, and be encouraged together. One prophet after another, persons in tongues, all the gifts being shared, body ministry. Go look at body ministry. God bless you. Bye-bye.